There was a gun. There was a gun in his hand, okay? We're devastated. I mean, this is, we've been here 65 years and have somebody shooting in your church. They don't want to kill Joel Osteen. A harrowing scene unfolded at Joel Osteen's megachurch in Texas when a woman clad in a trench coat unleashed gunfire inside the sanctuary. Amidst the chaos, two off-duty officers confronted her, ultimately stopping her, but not before tragedy struck. Reports suggest the woman entered the church accompanied by a five-year-old boy, sparking speculation about his connection to Joel Osteen. Allegations swirl on social media that Austin fathered the child but refused to acknowledge it. Out of frustration, the woman desperately acted, taking matters into her own hands. Tragically, amidst the gunfire, the child was shot and gravely injured, adding another layer of heartbreak to the already tumultuous situation. Houston Police Chief Troy Fenner stated that it remains unclear whether the child was hit by the off-duty officers who returned fire. Additionally, a 57-year-old man was also wounded by gunfire. The child is currently in critical condition at a children's hospital, while the man is stable at a different hospital with a wound to his hip. Finner stated that following the woman's initiation of gunfire, both officers responded by engaging her, resulting in her death. He expressed regret that the five-year-old child was struck. She entered the building. She was armed with a long rifle and a trench coat with a backpack, accompanied by a small child, approximately four to five years old. Uh, once she entered, uh, at some point she began to fire. Both officers, the officer and agent, uh, engaged, uh, striking the female. Uh, she's deceased here on the scene. Unfortunately, the five-year-old kid was hit and is in critical condition. Finner did not provide immediate details regarding the sequence of events leading to the confrontation. He commended the officers for swiftly confronting the woman, emphasizing, she was armed with a long gun so the situation could have escalated significantly. The identity of the deceased woman has not been disclosed yet, and he noted that her motive remains unclear. The shooting occurred during the interval between services at the megachurch, which boasts a weekly attendance of 45,000, ranking it as the third largest in the United States, as reported by the Hartford Institute for Religion Research. Additionally, Austin's televised sermons have a global reach, extending to approximately 100 countries. Austin's whereabouts at the time of the incident were unclear. However, he later stood alongside police at a news conference, expressing the church's profound sense of devastation. He emphasized that the situation could have escalated further had it occurred during the busier 11 a.m. service. He pledged prayers for the victims, the woman responsible for the shooting, and their families. It could have been a lot worse. Of course, we're devastated. I mean, this is, we've been here 65 years and have somebody shooting in your church. But, you know, we don't understand why these things happen, but we know God's in control. and. We're going to pray for that little five-year-old boy and pray for the lady that was deceased, her family and all, and, and the other gentlemen. But I don't know. It's just um, kind of in a fog. But, you know, just believe that, you know, we're, we're going to stay strong. We're going to continue to, to move forward. And there are forces of evil, but the, the forces that are for us, the forces of God are stronger than that. So we're going to keep going strong and just, uh, you know, doing what God's called us to do, lift people up and give hope to the world. I went into the ladies' room, and when I came out, I headed towards the nearest exit on the second floor and I heard this like the bam, bam, like, like uh, mechanical sounds like, it almost sounded like folding uh, tables were being dismantled and dropped to the floor. And then there was another set of like bam, bam, bam. And then all of a sudden it sounded, I, I stopped and uh, I looked at the entrance and people were screaming and scattering. On Sunday afternoon, a substantial presence of police and fire trucks, including the fire department's hazardous materials unit, gathered near one of the church's entrances. Police Chief Finner stated that there were reports that the woman possessed a bomb, but subsequent searches of her vehicle and backpack yielded no explosives. Once um, she went down, um, officers reported back to us that she threatened uh, that she had a bomb. So we searched her vehicle, our bomb squad, um, and also the backpack. No explosives were found. As authorities evacuated the church before the news conference, worshippers were observed exiting the building. Officials promptly announced the establishment of a reunification center at a nearby gym, facilitating individuals to locate their loved ones. Oh, yeah. The church is now is nothing but a party. Yeah. It's a playhouse. That's it's right. nothing but a game. That's Look right. at Kanye West can go down there at Joel Alstein Church and just play. That's right. Just play. That's right. Joel Alstein playing and he invite a sinner to a do sinner. what? Play. That's right. That's right. Well, Kanye West is a Christian. If Kanye West is a Christian, I'm high on weed right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs>
You don't know what a Christian is. No. No. If he's a Christian, then I'm high right now. Right, right now. Say amen, everybody. <laughs> You've been spoiled by Joel Austin. <laughs> Read your Bible. God have never, since he been God, sent a man to justify sin, sent a man who's scared to speak against sin, and God never sent a man to walk hand in hand with the conduct of the world. That's right. A man of God always stood separate from the world. Unfortunately, this is one kind of incident that did happen one day when Pastor Joel Austin was preaching and all know that it saddens heart that the house of God should be a place where and women gather together to worship God, to give God all the praise, all the honor, and to also appreciate the work and the wonders of God. But on this faithful day, it happened as this so-called woman entered the house of God with a gun and ended up taking a life. Now we know that when it comes about the ministry of Pastor Joel Austin, his stands, his teachings, and every other thing he believes in. Now we have seen him on several occasions and on different places where Pastor Joel Austin has compromised the gospel on different ways. For instance, Pastor Joel Austin believes that whether you are a lesbian or you are a gay, you will still succeed going to heaven. Even though the Bible, had, the Bible has made it clear that the homosexuals shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And we know Pastor Geno Jennings as a minister who is very vocal, preaching the unadulterated word of God, preaching the uncontaminated and again uncompromised gospel. And through that, he's made a lot of enemies for himself. And many people sometimes think that when Pastor Gino Janis is speaking about a concept or a certain particular topic of a minister that he believes that the minister is in error or the minister has gone wayward as to compare to scriptures, people think that always Pastor Gino Janis is just looking for something against his fellow ministers or probably he does not really like them or probably Pastor Gino Janice envies them or probably he is just a person who continuously envy his colleague ministers so he's trying to do his best just to tarnish their image or bring them down but I strongly believe that this is far from that now we have to take the biblical understanding of scripture so seriously because now whatever a christian may become whether strong christian or whether a christian that is cold or whether a christian who is hypocrite or whether a christian who does not know even our lord jesus christ it all depends on scripture and so the understanding of scripture the understanding of what really the Bible is about is solely important. Now, even if you study the lifestyle of the disciples, you study how some of them died, many of the disciples, the apostles we read about today in the Bible suffered a horrible death that you can't ever imagine that they had to go through this just to survive or just for the gospel to survive up to this date many of them had to had to go through tough times some of them lost their lives so the gospel will live to see this day and so preaching the gospel or the gospel itself many people have paid a huge price for the gospel we hear about now even when you begin to study even the life of our, our lord jesus christ when he came and when he died according to history according to time it is almost over 2000 years plus and after the death of jesus christ the apostles that took over to spread the gospel remember in matthew 
chapter 28 verse 20 or verse 19. This is when Jesus was almost about ascending unto the Father and gave instructions to the disciples and said that they should go unto the world preaching the gospel, making disciples of the gospel and baptizing people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And so a lot has gone through, a lot of sacrifices has gone through for us to see or to hear the gospel today. And so this is the reason why we must of all necessity protect the gospel and make sure that the gospel is never contaminated, the gospel is never diluted, the gospel is never, never compromised because of one person's preferences, interests or their own personal gain because it is exactly what is happening in the kingdom. Now, it is sad that this is what actually happened to Pastor Joel Austin and his in his ministry. But what matters is that we as Christians must equally make sure that we preach a gospel that is approved by the Holy Spirit. We minister a gospel that is uncompromised, uncontaminated or diluted for any individual's gain or profit or self-vision or self or for self-purpose and that is exactly what is happening in the kingdom as we watch and so when we begin to look at what is happening around the church and how pastors of today have compromised a lot when it comes about the gospel of our lord jesus christ at a certain point you will come to a conclusion and you come to you will come to an agreement in conclusion with pastor genogenes for his stance and sometimes his style of presenting the gospel and whatever pastor genogenes believes in trust you me it is not a joke today Many people take the gospel for granted because of certain pastors we have today. Imagine, Pastor Joel Austin is one of the pastors with the largest congregation. He's one of the pastors with the third largest congregation in the United States of America. And aside that also, when you come to the continent of Africa and other parts of the world, he's a minister that so many millions of people listen to. So when a minister like that comes to a conclusion that irrespective of a person's preferences of being a gay or being a lesbian, they still have access to heaven, then it is a huge blunder. This particular minister is misleading a large group of people that are headed towards hell. So the work Pastor Genogenes is doing, many people may not understand. But at the end of the day, the idea behind it, the vision behind it is that ministers of the gospel will minister the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That they will preach what is written, they will preach what is permitted, and they will not preach what is not written or they won't twist the gospel because they are friends with other people and they feel like when they begin to minister the truth many people will not come to church or will not like them and so in a at the end of the day you don't have to come to a conclusion in a point where you would have to hate pastor genogenes for his stance for his style of preaching and whatever he believes in now, I strongly believe that there is more to the ministry of Pastor Genogenes and that the agenda is that to hit it at where people are supposed to get it. And so you don't have to, you don't have to hit the ministry of Pastor Genogenes. You don't have to look down on him and think that the man is always seeking whom he may disgrace or he is just after clouds that has never been the assignment that has never been the uh, has never been the agenda i believe there is more to that and that the end of the day believers should not be misled because if gospel preachers speak whatever they want when it's even on biblical the implications of this is so huge is so massive that if we don't take care many of them are headed straight to hell that whatever happens after that 
is so dangerous and is so worse that at the end of the day, the gospel, the word of God that people labored for, that the spread of even the gospel, what people have done and have labored for at the end, at the end of the day is surely going to be in vain. And so we need voices like Pastor Genogenes, who does not compromise the gospel but preach the unadulterated, the uncompromised, the solid and the sincere word of God to souls today. And that is exactly how it's supposed to be.